Hey what's happening guys, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be taking a good look at another all-kit sidearm, the MLE-1903. So in the late 1800s and early 1900s, Belgium arms manufacturer Fabrique Nationale actually collaborated with none other than America's weapon design expert John Browning, and together they worked to create and sell Browning's first successful semi-automatic blowback operated pistol, the Model 1900, aka the Browning No. 1. Despite being a reliable and very popular pocket pistol at the time, FN wanted to expand to the military market and mass produce something a bit bigger that packed more of a punch. And so Browning set off to meet these requests and improve upon his M1900 design. Not long after, the FN MLE 1903 or the Browning No. 2 was created, which was based on a similar mechanical design as Browning's Colt Model 1903 pocket harmless pistol, though it was made slightly larger to manage a 9mm cartridge. In 1904, the gun was marketed as an effective but affordable alternative to the Luger pistol throughout Europe and Latin America, and down to its high quality, accuracy and ease of use, the FN 1903 was issued to several different police forces and militaries. Although it was well liked, the handgun never really took off in sales when compared to some of Browning's other pistols, though it did appear in quite a lot of different conflicts throughout the early 20th century. During the Great War, production of the gun came to a complete standstill when the FN factory was invaded by German troops in 1914, and Sweden, who were relying on FN to produce the weapons at the time, were a bit stuck, as they needed a source for new pistols to meet military and domestic demand. Uncertain about how long the war was going to last, they decided to obtain a license to manufacture a variant of the gun themselves, designated as the M1907 in 1917, and these models were produced all the way up to 1942 by Husqvarna who actually went on to make more pistols than the original FN factory in Belgium, accounting for over 65% of the weapon's overall production. Now in Battlefield 1, the MLE 1903 boasts a maximum damage value of 30 up to 12 meters, which is where that damage starts to drop off down to just 13.5 beyond 37 meters. So we can see that the pistol has a fairly similar damage output to the P08. It's going to kill in 4 bullets up to 16 meters and less further away. The only real difference between the two guns is the MLE's lower minimum damage value, which is going to make it slightly less effective at long distances. And if your opponent happens to be further than 34 meters, you're going to need an extra 8th bullet to take them out. The MLE takes the same amount of bullets to kill as most of the other quicker firing pistols, like the Frommerstop and the Modelo 1915. Though with the MLE being able to retain a higher damage for longer, this actually allows it to take down an enemy in one less bullet, between the ranges of 11 to 34 meters resulted in an overall quicker time to kill at medium distances. The MLE 1903 fires its bullets at a respectable 360 RPM, so in terms of fire rate, it kind of bridges the gap between the slower and quicker firing semi-autos, sitting somewhere in the middle. It's probably going to have a slight advantage over a few of the other guns up close like the P08 and C96, down to its increased RPM, but it won't quite reach the same rapid fire levels as some of the other weapons, which are capable of killing in the same amount of bullets in close quarters. Though the pistol does have a pretty fast deploy time of just 0.45 seconds, which is a tiny bit faster than most of the other handguns, and therefore might be a good option for finishing off weakened players damaged by a primary weapon. One thing to point out about the MLE 1903 is the fact that it's one of the most accurate sidearms in the game, with a vertical kick of 1.1 and a horizontal kick of 0.3. It's much easier to stay on target with than the M1911 and even the P08, despite them both firing slower and both having a fairly similar damage output at medium ranges. Because it has one of the smallest horizontal recoil values, this means that your shots are more likely to go where you want them to, as the gun isn't going to bounce around very much, making it more accurate to use, and this is going to make it less of an effort to hit your target beyond closer ranges, where the MLE might be more effective than most of the other sidearms. Its bullets fly through the air at 350 meters per second, just like the P08, which is generally on the higher side, and this might make it easier to use against opponents a tad further away. This is going to complement the MLE's recoil pattern, and make it a more reliable and often more consistent gun to use, as you won't have to worry too much about leading your target's movements to allow for bullet travel time. Though with a fairly average ammo capacity of 8 bullets with 7 rounds in the mag and 1 bullet which can be left over in the chamber, this isn't too generous and means that a lot of the time you're going to have to be accurate over range if you want to kill without having to reload, especially with the gun needing up to 8 direct hits to kill anyway. Considering it can't hold a tremendous amount of ammo and it can't deal huge amount of damage per shot, 
The MLE's reload time is one of the lengthiest out of the semi-auto handguns, with the Mars Automatic only being slightly slower. It's not ridiculously bad, but it could still leave you vulnerable if you get yourself outnumbered or you don't manage to kill your target in those 7 or 8 rounds. So, in conclusion, the MLE 1903 is generally going to perform better than most of the other handguns just beyond closer ranges. Its ability to retain a higher damage further allows it to kill in less bullets than the quicker firing pistols at medium distances. And because it's got a pretty good recoil pattern and a fairly quick muzzle velocity, this makes it easier to use at these distances too. With that said, it can only hold up to 8 rounds at a time. Its reloads are on the longer side, meaning there's less room for error, and because it has a low minimum damage, this makes it slightly less effective than some of the other semi-auto pistols at longer ranges. But generally, the MLE 1903 can perform well over most distances, with its fine balance between speed and power. And providing you quit to the trigger, you can quite often outgun a lot of your opponents in the heat of battle. But that's it for another one guys, I hope you enjoyed the guide, thumbs up if you did, and subscribe for more stuff coming soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in that next video.